So some of you guys were asking about uh, the new engine restoration oil restore and protect from Valvoline and well here we are I'm gonna throw that it's just uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the restore and protect in the F1 F1 shitty here and uh, yeah we're gonna put in there change the oil and filter and stuff and then take the oil that's in it right now pull it out uh, I've got Pennzoil Platinum, regular 5W30 in here right now. We're going to send it off for testing. It has, I went a little bit longer on this one just to push it some. Um, I want to say about 5,400 miles. Normally I try to do my oil by between four and 5,000. Uh, this one, when I went a little bit more, about 5,400 miles on this oil. Uh, she's been driving it, not me. So, yeah, it's down to like 11% or 10% left on the dash. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pull it out here, grab my sample, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, and then I didn't even touch this thing the last couple months, this catch can. So you guys are gonna get to see this catch can. I did a one month, I think I did a one week and a one month, but I haven't done like, uh, it's been like almost three months to see what the, Catch can looks like. Oh, it's only about halfway. About halfway full. See how it smells. It smells like fuel. Bad. So we're gonna put it back. We cleaned it out. It was good, not excessive. I'm glad that I'm catching it in the catch can versus getting it sucked back into the intake manifold because this is what helps keeps the valve cleaner. It's what cleans up the combustion process, keeps that truck making real good power. And I ended up picking this up off Amazon for like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. The thing that shocked me in this whole thing is it has OE fittings that clip right into, yeah, but I haven't seen it in stock since, so we're not even gonna talk about that because they don't even have it anymore. So what I would recommend is looking at Dorman's Universal one. AutoZone has been selling them lately. All right, we got everything. Look at the fluid film. Look how not a, not a speck of rust this winter on this thing with the fluid film on there. Fluid film has done this truck good, real good. It's really kept the underside of this truck very, very, very clean. And it finally dried about three or four weeks after enough to have this like light layer of oil still there, but nothing rusting. It's very nice. Not dried, but I should say it settled. It kind of picked up enough road dust and debris to kind of solidify or make the make the the oil a little bit more thick and the underside of this truck ended up no rust anywhere real good and we're in the middle of winter i love it fluid film for the wind baby well and bla blaster service shield i like them both oh and uh by the way you see what i got on here see if i can get the See that? FL820, baby. Yeah, I switched from a 500 to a uh, 820 because it's the same thread pitch. It's the same same gasket seal. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a snug fit, but it's got twice the capacity. The thing that I got to be careful of is the FL500s have like a 5 to 8 PSI bypass. They bypass way more often, which I, I, I like that on cold start, but I don't like that when it's running because if that filter is bypassing often that means it's not filtering properly uh the fl820 has a 16 psi bypass rating so we're going to try that and see if see what happens all right so we got to put the, the oil now the restore and protect in here this one is like 7.7 .7 quarts and i know the the cap says 5W20 is the spec for this truck, 
but I'm using 5W30 because the truck does have over 100,000 miles on it and the engine runs a little smoother with the 5W30 versus 5W20. I'm trying to experiment right now and then we're going to step up to 10W30 and then possibly 15W40 after that. Just because a lot of F-150 owners have been switching their oil up to a thicker oil and the engine's been getting much quieter and they don't have a lot of the noises that you would normally experience with 5W20. So total we need 7.7. So we're gonna go ahead because of the bigger filter, we're gonna put um, actually like 8.2 in there because we increased the filter size. Which will take up for some of the capacity. Three is, a little under three is what's left in here. So, seven, a little bit more. We're down to two, so we're at eight right now. Mm -hmm. That's me. Right there is about where we need to be. Okay. You see, I went down, there's, I put five in, then I put three, and then I went a little bit more. So I'm right in here at about like 8.2, 8.3, and then we'll start it and we'll see where our oil level's at. Now I get a lot of messages, people are like, oh, I have an F-150 and I can't flood mode my vehicle like you can because I have push to start. Yes, you can flood mode your vehicle. You just have to do it a little bit different than me. And I get guys all the time to say, oh, well, I have the key thing and my vehicle started up right away and it didn't flood mode. That's because you're not doing it right. Basically what flood mode is, is it's it, it's been around since carburetor days and it's to disable the fuel going into the engine so you can clear out excessive fuel vapors and what you do is i got my foot right here push the gas down hold it to the floor and then crank the engine over you know five to ten seconds is all you need okay that's it. Now watch. When I start it up, I'm going to get oil pressure quicker. And there it is. That's all it is. It's all you need. Push to start is the same exact process that I just showed you, except you're going to put your left foot on the brake while holding down the accelerator, and you're going to push the button. And then that button knows exactly how long to crank the engine. It's going to crank it for like 10 seconds. And then when you're done with that, Put your foot on the brake again, take your foot off the gas and start it and it'll fire up. And you pre-primed your oil system so you didn't start it dry. So let's climb under here real quick and let's look and see, it. did we leak anything? Are we dry? How did that FL820 do? It sounded great when it started up. And we ain't got no leaks, we're good to go. Okay, let's check the oil, let's see what we got and figure out where we're at. There it is. There's the oil line. About three quarters up the hash mark. 8.2, 8.3 seems to be perfect. You can even probably go 8.5 if you really wanted to, but I'm okay with that right there. Now let's go ahead and get in here real quick and we will reset the oil life. Wow, even before it started, the oil pressure was zoom. That's nice. I like to see that. Oil percent. Resetting. Got it. 100%. So what I did was I went to display mode. And then you can go through different statuses. What, percent oil life. And then I just held the button, OK button down. And then it reset to 100%. So we got 104, 237. I'll see you guys in another 5,000 miles with a different weight of oil to go into this truck. Hopefully the same type. If not, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there. Now, just because you see me do something doesn't mean it's gonna benefit you. I am a very curious person and I like to test things out and sometimes I do ruin things testing things out. 
in this particular incident I think I got lucky with this oil filter and I kind of suspected that it would run a little quieter and stuff or it would with this oil being fresh it would be so but we're gonna keep we're gonna keep up with things we're gonna keep up with things over the next few weeks and stuff so if any of you guys end up being curious hey how's the truck sound now how does that you know how's this how whatever you know whatever it may be we'll see uh this new valvoline oil is supposed to be some pretty good stuff i've got some tests out right now to blackstone labs and uh the motor oil geek i got two different tests going on the same oils to see if i can compare them to each other and they they test the same um i got the pennzoil platinum out of the truck sitting right here next to me it's in my little container it's got to go out and then uh I'm going to send off the sample of the 5W30 Valvoline as well, so I can compare the 020, 520, and the 5W30. The 5W30 is just going to probably be a little delayed, obviously. Um, but it, that's it. The uh, truck seemed to start great. Oil pressure was responding really quick. And, uh, yeah, I think we're good. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, please let me know. Thing. Before we get off of here, why did I switch from an FL500 to an FLA20? Well, an FLA20 adds more capacity to your system. It's a bigger filter. It filters more. It's got more media in it. It's just more filtering and more capacity for the system overall. It means just that much better. A little bit more expensive, but just that much better. Take care.